This is London. This is home. Seeing violence, deaths, shooting, stabbings. But look, we was once the cause of it. So who else is best to solve the problem? I went in prison for murder. I went in prison for attempted murder, twice. I went in prison for shootings, countless amount of times. All my life has been a, a trail of violence. Violence, violence, violence. And I've only changed in the last year. I stopped because I saw a church that could help me. The gang members that I'm dealing with are the most dangerous guys in the community. They're the most dangerous guys in the papers. They're the most dangerous guys in the society. That's who I'm dealing with. My church, Spark Nation, is offering gang members everything that the government can't offer them, everything that the authorities can't offer them. Do you understand? Which is a way out. Spark Nation is a church trying to help gang members get out of gang life. Its head pastor, Toby Adeboyega, is arriving for the weekly Sunday service, which he's holding in the London Hotel. What? Yeah. Why is man watching your pocket? <laughs> I like to look good by myself, but just have to be honest. But then it connects to people, I think. It connects to younger people. They, um, they see you as part of them. Why are they attracted to Jay-Z? Why are they attracted to all the musicians? Why are they attracted to drug dealers? They just love the face of the drug dealer? No, no matter how um, much you mean well for people, if you can't get them to listen to you, then nothing is gonna happen. You've got organizations out there dealing with knife crime, gun crime, da 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 da. A bunch of jokes. Nothing is working. Pastor Toby's young following includes some of the most violent gang members in London. A community is a mix up of the good, the bad, the ugly. And that's what the church should be like. So, yes, we do have 40% or more of people coming from a very rough background. They could have been gang leaders, major drug dealers in their areas. Toby made millions consulting on property deals. He believes the answer to tackling the gang problem is by turning gang members into entrepreneurs. Yes, sir. I love that man on the street, that's what I live for. Especially when I realize he's got 20 people in his gang and he's already on the street making money. So what I've got to do is to convince him to jettison that kind of income by providing another kind of income for him. See, we're going to celebrate a group of men who've taken on a challenge head on. The church uses street evangelists and social media to recruit. During service, there is a big security presence to control rival gangs in the congregation. It's not long before the security team is called into action. It's come to my attention that a certain individual is with us today and he also uh, has a prior with someone who has long been established with us. So he's no longer part of that life, but obviously this person has beef with him, so to speak. But it's, it's a delicate situation and we are eyes on. The newcomer to the church is a close friend of ex-gang leader, Pastor Kevin, who tries to calm the situation. Eventually, the two men from rival gangs are seated far apart on different sides of the hall. What I want you to do right now is to leave where you are and begin to walk towards me. 
you also have things to During the service, Pastor Toby encourages gang members to come forward. It's going to change your life forever. If you are a part of a gang till now, and you want to stop that lifestyle, you're tired of the ends. This is your moment. Coming to church is the first step on a journey which could change their lives. Ex-gang leader Kevin is one of the church's newest pastors. Church members fund young people to start their own companies. They help Kevin get out of gang life by funding him with 30 grand to start up his chauffeuring firm. I've just had enough of black boys being spoke about a certain way. I just want to see the brothers win. No one's gonna start selling drugs to just buy shoes. Every single person and selling something because they want a way out. He is now trying to recruit his former gang members to the church. He believes legitimate business opportunities can lead people away from crime. I target the founders of certain street organisations because from the founders, they are the ones that have the influence. Top of the chain of command and high on Kevin's target list is rapper Young Diz. I'm perceived as a violent person on these streets in East London, in Newham. So if you're in East London and you don't know me, then you're playing yourself. I'm perceived as as violent as it gets out here. Man, I stabbed that you to the core. I didn't kill him, but I tried to. Man, I heard that his car broke down. I went round there with a star and I Young Diz's violent like reputation that. is played out in his music. Despite his lifestyle now, he left school with eight GCSEs. You know, you know. Last year I was in OT. All the people that I grew up with, that I looked up to, like, were gang members, like, so it's crazy, man. Get me? My uncles were all involved in the gangs. Everything, man. They all been through the gang stuff. Like all I know, that like, when I growing up, all I knew was gang, gang, gang. You know what I'm saying? Young Diz says he wants to escape the gang environment he was born into. I'm labelled as a gang leader, innit? I'm labelled as a person that runs Beckton, the Beckton community, innit? That's what I'm labelled as in the police's eyes, innit? But. I'm not that person, innit? You get me? Today, Young Diz has his first meeting with the head of the church. He's gonna have a meeting with the big boss. BT. <laughs> it's nice, man. You've seen the scenery. Show them the scenery, innit? It's mad, innit? Look at the cars and that. You get me? Young Diz says he's currently under investigation by the police. He wants to find out how the church can help him become a legitimate businessman. Is it fair to negotiate with someone like Young Diz and to provide all the alternatives? I don't know how the Lord will feel about it, but I do know that if we can get one life saved on the street, I think the Lord will feel great about it. I'm good, man. The church don't own the companies they help kickstart, but successful entrepreneurs are invited to invest back into other church-affiliated businesses. This what's up? How are we? Oh, it's just being mad, isn't it? It's just being... I just live a mad life, man. Just go through mad stuff, man. By the way, um, I heard the name they call you sometimes. What do you call me? Something with devil or something like that. Oh, yeah, it could be the devil and that, yeah. It's just another name for me, isn't it? Devil. Did that come from anything that happened or just? Uh, and obviously, um, I got I got shot and stabbed, innit? 
How old were you when you got shot in the step? This was about seven months ago. Seven months ago. I got shot, I got stabbed. I don't know, like 10, 11 times or something like that. Or maybe even what? more. Yeah, man. It's just, it's just so much blood. And then obviously one of the wounds was like, it was a big wound because where well, I got shot, it was close range, isn't it? So he couldn't get any closer than like, that. So basically, I basically got shot how close we are right now, innit? Whoa. So you get me? People always ask me, oh, why are you always so angry? Why are you like, I'm just, bro, I'm telling you, I'm just angry, man. I'm pissed off, man. Say it, man. 24-7. You've got to change that now. You've got to keep others alive. No, man, I'm just, I'm telling you, I don't know where it is, man. Just, God kept you alive. These things happen. But I think success is the best way hmm. to retaliate. But this is the deal with this, and I'm going to be very straight with you, if you don't mind. This is the deal. You love music. Yeah. You want to do music. What I'm saying is this. We've got to take this music thing. I think we even have a studio now coming to Beckton. Um, we've got to take it to the next stage. But I need guys like you. You guys can connect to the next generation. Are you going to make money from this? I'm willing to put as much as it takes in. The only thing I can't put into is violence. Now, you and your guys got to respect what I'm trying to do as well. Hmm. We've got to pass a positive message. This. That's my thought. What do you think, bro? <clears throat> yeah, I'm taking it in. Still, I respect that. So, I respect everything you say. Yeah. Did you get it? So. This is my, you know, temporary accommodation. Being let out of um, prison, it's, you know, it's brought me here. So I'm in, I'm in this place trying to, you know, give myself some space and give myself some time and give myself a better responsibility and make myself a better person in society. Junior is a father of two and has another child on the way. He's been living in a hostel since he got out of jail. He was convicted of supplying drugs and possession of ammunition. Every time I look outside, I see, I see everything as opportunity. You know, I always say, the world's my oyster. And this, you know, this is London, isn't it? Land of opportunity. So I'm just trying to make the best out of the situation and get the best outcome that I can possibly get. Junior has been in a gang for nearly 15 years and has a long rap sheet. Aged 18, he was charged with murder through joint enterprise, but found not guilty. In the streets, it weren't, it's not diplomatic. It's like, look, I want to make some money, you want to make money, but I don't want to make money with you. You're not my friend. So if you're not going to make money, if you're not going to make money with me, you're my enemy. Fuck it. So then stuff like that ends up leading to a lot of, you know, gang rivalry, a lot of shootouts, a lot of stabbings and. Just <laughs> a lot of situations that you think to yourself, like, raw, like, you know? I was always in the midst of things. I was always the, the brave type of guy. Like, I was always the guy, like, you know what? Like, if we're going to go do something, let's just go do it. Like, fuck it. Like, I don't... We ain't got no time for this talking. Let's just go there. I was deep. I was very, very deep. Very, very, very deep. Junior is now looking for a way out of gangland. He has started coming to Kevin's weekday service in East London, which attracts hardcore gang members. You don't need it anymore. It's holding you down. You have to let it go. It is coming out in the name of Jesus. Despite his willingness to change, Junior is facing a battle to leave his past behind. A man once said to me, always be ready to meet your killer. And, <laughs> and to be honest, I'm always ready. So if that day ever comes, it comes, innit? You are the light in your family. You are the light in your kingdom. You are the transition the is like 80-20. I'm not saying I'm, in, I'm involved in that life, but there's still people that I still talk to that are involved. There's still people that I hang around that are involved. And it's so easy getting caught up in that.
it's easy for someone to live in Brixton and sell drugs, very easy. Because there will always be people leading you on to do that. Brought up by a single parent in one of the most violent areas in Brixton, 16-year-old Jaheem is surrounded by gangs and dangerously close to getting sucked into the lifestyle. Growing up was just really tough. People would tell you, oh, do you want to sell drugs or do this for me? And my man would not do it. That's what I'm saying, that's why it's really tough. Anyone could lead up, there was always, when I used to grow up, gangbangers all over, all over, surrounded. To stay away, very hard. Very, very, very hard. I was going to call you the other day as well, man. Yeah. It's a lie, man. Yeah, no, yeah. Once you can listen to them, then they will say, raw, go bust that shot for me. You bust the shot. Then it'll be like, oh, go pick up that for me. Could be weapon, gun I'm talking about, knife I'm talking about, weed I'm talking about, class A drugs I'm talking about. Then it leads them from there. Jaheem has managed to avoid being in a gang, but he did start selling drugs. Now, with the help of the church, he is trying to escape the dangers that come with dealing. I wasn't doing this, this drug thing for a very long time. I wasn't doing it for long. It was only, say, like two months, and then that's how everything happens for a reason, because someone came to talk to me about spec. See today, man's gonna do the church thing right now. That's what's gonna happen. Get some blessings, hear the word of God. But I need a lot of blessings, man. <laughs> Young Diz says he's been arrested twice for attempted murder, but he's only received convictions for minor offenses. People call him Satan, people call him Satan's cousin, but that's, that's them. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? And people are so quick to judge. I've come out of the jungle, should I say. And these men are still in the jungle. The whole mission now is to just get them and expose them to a new gang. At the service, the rapper is experiencing the sounds of gospel drill. The artists are from gang backgrounds and still wear balaclavas as part of their act. The church has offered to back a music business with Young Diz, but he'll have to give up his violent lyrics as part of the deal. It's my time for change. It's my time for in your life. That's my only fear out here, God's judgment. And that worries, man, you get me, you know what I'm saying? The man's not worried about nothing else, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, he knows certain things in my life happen for a reason, innit? But other than that, there's certain things I shouldn't be doing, and he knows that, innit? Service is good still. I feel blessed. I come out there feeling refreshed. Regardless if I change my life or whatever, yeah, I'm always gonna have to keep another two eyes behind my back because, you get me, people have held me accountable. I've got to keep coming, you know what I mean? I've got to keep coming to see where my journey goes, and you get me? Junior is back in the area where he was deeply involved in gangs. This is my place. I grew up here. I was born here, innit? But when I do come back here, whether there's, there's always going to be trouble when, it, when you come back here anyway, because, you know, there's a lot of rivalries that's going on, you know, in Newham as a borough and as a whole. So you've always got to be on the two steps. But at the same time, this is, this is my place, innit? 
Yeah, I see you switching it off in that. Boss, man, I'm not trying to change my life out here, but you man need to get off the, get out of, get out of the bullshit, man. I'm talking about, you know, for some of us, man, that's all we get me, that's all it is, fam. Yeah. That's all it is, that's why I just on the block trying to get hours, you get me? Of course, man. That's all it man. is, fam. That's it. That's, he's the older generation, you get me? I'm yeah. the younger generation. Yeah. The is hot. That's all it is. If I'm out, I can't lie though, I'm going to keep it beautiful. Say that, say that. Clear, guys, yeah. They're, you know, some good young lads. They ain't seen, they ain't seen the errors of their ways yet, but eventually they will. Gang life for Junior started when he was 13. A person gave me an opportunity to become a street pharmacist. I couldn't ask my mom for pocket money. My dad wasn't around, so what, um, what am I supposed to do? So I had to do something for myself. I had to seek an opportunity myself. In the past, Junior's had legitimate jobs with prospects. But in spite of the risks, he's always been tempted back to dealing. I could make a phone call and <laughs> everything will change. It will change like that in an instant. That like, I'm not going to sit here and lie. Growing up in South London and surrounded by gangs, Jaheem is now facing decisions about his future. He's seen the devastating effects of violence in his community. It's five people who's gone, and we're halfway through the year right now. So that's, that's way too much. In this area right now, there's one, and there's one over there, and there's one right there. So there's three people in this short area right now where I'm in, who's so close to me, who's 16 to 18, who's died. The ones that I personally know, just getting getting stabbed. That's the main one, getting stabbed. Or like, there's one, there's one will happen recent. What you just you're just playing playing in the area, playing pounds, and then someone just comes around and shoots you. So that's the that's the most recent one. If it wasn't for Spack Nation over the struggle. What goes on in the environment is that people just sell drugs. And then if you sell drugs, you're also going to walk, walk with a knife because you don't want people to take your drugs off you. Otherwise, you shouldn't do it. So when you sell drugs, you're going to have a little bit of strength in you. So you're going to roll with a knife too, right? And when you see someone, anything could happen. It just makes me feel like more help's needed and it only ends up jail or dead. Jail or dead. You know. Don't slip or slide, two shotguns in a ride. Don't slip or slide, two shotguns in a ride. Pick your side, you know the six of steps, straight headshots, leave my fried. Touch one of ours, it's an old fat. Touch one of ours and one will die. Them man sending shots in tracks, us man really send shots in rides. Young Diz is in the studio recording his latest track. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's still considering the church's offer. They'll go into business with him, yeah, yeah. but only if he stops rapping about violence. The music's violent. That's what I like to do, I like to do violent music, so whenever I get in the booth, when you hear me on, when you hear me on the tune, you know you're going to hear some violent stuff. I'm not going to come to fucking, you know, fucking turn on the radio and start fucking listening to fucking Adele or something, you know what I'm saying? I ain't got no problem with Adele, but man's not into that, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be listening to no fucking love songs and that shit, that's all long, man, that's not me, man, you get me? I want that violent shit 24-7, man. A young boy's ready for war. Of course we stepped in the ride to kill, what you take this for? Gang life has put Diz in danger, but it's also given him money and notoriety, making it hard for him to leave behind. Will I be able to change? That's the big question of a big question mark at the end, you know? Will I be able to change? But it's a very big question, you know? What do you mean that the six don't bang? We've taped most their chilling spots now we don't even know where they hang. We invested our lives for the cause. This is more than a gang. 
if I get that drop, this is just 21, but the rest of his life will be shaped by whether he chooses gang or God. It's not a nerd, it's not easy, it's not, it's like, it's not like, obviously my eyes are just opened, innit? Like, my eyes just opened, man, to reality, man, you know what I'm saying? It's been like this for a while, man, you get me? My eyes just open, man, you know what I'm saying? This life's... You're not meant to, you know saying? You weren't put on this earth to live the way you're living. We're not, we weren't put on this earth to be like, you know what I'm saying, be bad people. I need to get away from this bullshit, man. You get me? I want to have a family and that, you get me? I want to do normal things, you get me? See what I'm saying? Just, just, you know what I'm saying? The way I live, like, the way, the way my life's set up, it's not going to end well, innit, you know what I'm saying? Kevin is ready to recruit a member of his old gang as he's released from prison. The him? Yeah, that's him. The him? <laughs> and the church have to move Jaheem to a safe house. It wasn't really a choice. I just went because I didn't want anything to happen to me. 